All right. Um, welcome back, everyone. This is part two of February, March, twenty twenty-two, paper twelve. So, in part one, I'm gonna link part one if you haven't watched that yet. In part one, we solved questions one through six, and now we're gonna solve starting from question seven. So, in question seven, I'm seeing trigonometric identities. So, what what can we do here? So the first thing that I notice is that we have cosine theta minus two sine theta and cosine theta plus two sine theta. So I'm thinking that we can actually multiply like to turn into like to turn the two fractions into one single fraction. We can actually multiply and probably we're going to achieve a difference of squares. So it is important to remember that a squared minus b squared equals a plus b minus a minus b. Uh, a plus b multiplied by a minus b. Sorry for that. Yeah. So let's try actually multiplying things out. So we have... So we multiply this whole thing by this denominator. And then this whole thing by this denominator. So we're going to have... Oh my god, this guy so unclear now okay um what do we have now so we have sine theta plus two cosine theta multiplied by cosine theta plus two sine theta minus sine theta minus two cosine theta multiplied by cosine theta minus 2 sine theta and all of this is over so we have cosine theta minus 2 sine theta multiplied by cosine theta plus 2 sine theta so that will actually be a difference of squares so let's just square both things out so we have cosine square theta minus 4 sine square theta all right now let's expand the numerator and see what we get. Do we get anything useful? Let's see. So we have sine theta cosine theta plus 2 sine squared theta plus 2 cosine squared theta plus 4 cosine theta sine theta and all of this is subtracted from by sine theta cosine theta and then we have minus 2 sine minus 2 sine square theta Then we have minus 2 cosine square theta. Then we have plus 4 cosine theta sine theta. And of course, all of this is over cosine square theta minus or sine square theta. All right now we need to simplify the numerator. So let's see if we can actually subtract things. Okay, so we can see that this is going to cancel out with this. Then we have plus 2 sine theta plus 2 sine theta, which will give us plus 4 sine theta. So 4 sine square theta. We have plus 2 cosine square theta, and then another plus 2 cosine square theta. It's going to be another, no, we have plus 2 cosine square theta and another plus 2 cosine square theta. So it's going to be plus 4 cosine square theta. Then we have a plus 4 cosine theta sine theta minus, okay, so these things are going to cancel out. So this cancels out with this. So what we have here is cosine square theta minus 4 sine squared theta. 
All right, let's think, let's think, let's think. What we, what can we do here? What can we do here? Hmm. So we should know that cosine square theta, cosine square theta equals to one, which means that sine square theta equals one minus cosine square theta. This is something to remember. So using this, Let me just scroll down. Using this, I will turn this cosine theta into four multiplied by one minus cosine squared theta. So I'm gonna turn this into, and here I'm gonna turn the sine theta also into cosine theta. So we have four, one minus cosine squared theta plus four cosine squared theta because if we just look up at the question, the question asks to give the answer in cosines. So that's why I'm converting the sines into cosines. Then all of this is over cosine square theta minus four, one minus cosine squared theta. Hmm. All right, all right, so what are we achieving from this? Uh, sorry for that. Okay. What are we achieving from this? So what can we do? What can we do? Actually, we can try to... Hmm. Hmm, what we can try is actually this. So... Let me just equate this into four minus four cosine squared theta plus four cosine squared theta. And this is over cosine squared theta minus four plus four cosine squared theta, which is gonna give us, what is it gonna give us? So, minus and plus cancel out then we have then what is it going to give us this is going to give us four over five cosine squared theta minus four and let's just hope that this is what is being asked in the question five cosine squared theta minus four yep so okay so we solved that correctly uh, all right. So we don't need to check the mark scheme because that's basically what they ask for. All right. Now we need to equate that thing to five. So we have four over five cosine squared theta minus, no, plus four, minus four, sorry. Minus four equals to five. And I'll just multiply both sides by 5 cosine square theta minus 4, which will give us 4 equals 25 cosine squared theta minus 20. Mm -hmm. And then we can take the 4 to the other side. Or actually, we can take the 20 to the other side, and it will be 24 equals... 25 cosine squared theta. So cosine squared theta is going to be 24 over 25. All right, so this is 24 over 25. So cosine squared, uh, just cosine theta, is going to be uh, the plus and minus square root of 24 over 25, because if it's gonna, if it either if it's minus or plus, at the end it's gonna give us a plus. So theta is gonna be the inverse cosine of plus or minus square root of 24 over 25. 
and let me just plug that in the calculator. Uh, let's see, and this gives us, just one second, let me grab my calculator. So we have the square root of 24 over 25. And then we take the inverse cosine of that. So we get 11.47 degrees. And then let me take the negative one. We have negative 0 0.98 and and we have 168.52. So when we're dealing with uh, with uh, angles, we usually give them to one decimal place. So our answer is going to be, sorry for that. So our answer is going to be theta equals to 11.5 degrees and Theta equals to 168.5 degrees. That should probably be correct. Let me just check. The mark scheme, 11.5, 168.5. Yep, that's absolutely correct. All right, we can move on to the next question. So the diagram shows the circle with equation, this, 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 this. The chord AB of the circle intersects the positive Y axis at A. Mm -hmm. And it's parallel to the X axis. So parallel to the X axis means that the slope is basically zero. So we know that M is going to be zero. M for slope. Find by calculation the coordinates of A and B. All right, so we need to find the coordinates of A and B. Hmm. So I guess finding A isn't going to be difficult. We should basically find the value of X when, no, find the value of Y when X equals to zero. So we know that A is going to be like zero and the Y coordinate of A. Let's, let's call it Y A. So in order to find A, uh, we can just find the Y coordinate when X equals to zero. So we can plug X equals to zero into the circle equation. So I guess that sounds like a plan. Let's see. So if we plug in zero, we get zero minus two squared, which is just four. So we're basically doing this. So let me just highlight it. Showcase that it's our step. Step number one, basically. We have four plus y squared equals eight, which means that y squared equals to four, which gives us y equals to plus or minus two. Uh, yeah, that's true because we get two values because actually the circle crosses the y axis at exactly two places. So this is going to be minus two and this is plus two. And what we need is plus two. So in this case, y a equals to two. All right. So now actually we found out that the equation of a b. So the equation of a b is y equals to two. That's the equation. And now we can just equate the two equations to find this intersection point, this. So we need to equate y equals to two and the equation of the circle. So we basically just plug in two instead of y. That sounds like a plan. So we have x minus two squared plus two squared equals eight. So let me just say plug y equals to two. That's our step two. Just to make it more clear. Someone's going to be downloading the PDF file of this. So what we have here is x minus two squared equals 
4. So x minus 2 is going to equal plus or minus 2, which gives us x1 equals to 4 and x2 equals to 0. And yeah, that's completely true because also it intersects at two places where x equals to 0 and the next one is going to be, as we found, x equals to 4. So x equals to 4 is indeed our right answer. So the coordinate of A is going to be 0 and 2. And the coordinate of B is going to be 4 and 2. All right. So let me check if that's correct. A is 0, 2. B is 4, 2. Yep, that's absolutely correct. All right. And now... Find the volume of revolution when the shaded segment bounded by the circle and the chord AD is rotated about the x-axis. Okay, so it is, as well, it's rotated 300 degrees about the x-axis. So this little part is very important, which means that we should take the y squared form of the equation. All right. So we'll look at the shaded segment bounded by the circle and chord is rotated 360 degrees. Mm -hmm. So, how can we actually do it? We have to, when it comes to such questions, we just have to think. All right, let me make a area like this. So what we can actually find is the area when, I'll just shade it as red. We can find the area when this red segment is rotated about the x-axis 360 degrees. And then we can find this blue area. And then subtract. So that's going to be our plan. Let's just say this. So our plan is red minus blue. Okay. Uh, that sounds very childish, but yeah, that works, I guess. So now let's find red. So how do we find red? So we know that red is when the circle bounded by x equals to 0 and x equals to 4 is rotated about the x-axis. So the equation of the circle is this. So let's take out x minus 2 squared to the other side. So the equation is left as y squared. So the equation is going to be y squared equals 8 minus x minus 2 squared. And now we need to integrate it between 4 and 0 because we're finding the area bounded between x equals to 4 and x equals to 0. 8 minus x minus 2 squared dx and then we shouldn't forget to multiply all of this by pi since we're dealing with volume. All right, let's see how this is done. So what is this going to be? This is going to be 8x minus x minus 2 to the power 3 divided by 3. That's basically the simple rule of integrating. So if you don't know that, um, soon I will upload a video on integrating. So you can check the channel. So x minus 2 to the power of 3, divide by 3, and then all of this multiplied by pi. All right, so what I like to do actually is forget about the pi and just add it at the end. Yeah, that's basically what we're going to do. Now, we know that we should find 8x minus x minus 2 to the power of 3 over 3. 
between 4 and 0. So we're going to plug in x equals to 4 and then subtract x equals to 0. So this is actually going to be 8, 4 minus 2 to the power 3 over 3 minus 0 minus 8, which is just also 2 to the power 3. over 3. And let me see if that works. Yeah, that, that works perfectly fine. And let's see what we actually end up with. Let me just hope that I did not do any mistake here. And what we actually get here, I guess, is, um, so this is also going to be 8 over 3, and then we're going to add 8 over 3, so that's just going to cancel out. So I guess here we're left with just 32 pi. So that's the red part. And now let's find the, let's find the blue part. Hmm. For some reason, I think that I did a mistake somewhere. Let me see where I actually did a mistake. Oh, 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 yeah. So where I actually messed up is... Um... Actually messed up here, in this part, when I was plugging in zero because, so yeah, this is gonna be zero, and then we're gonna have minus two to the power three, which is minus eight. So minus minus is just gonna be plus. So eight over three. Yeah. All right. Now this is gonna be thirty-two minus. 32 minus 16 over 3, which is, um, let me just calculate it. So this is going to be 96 minus 16 over 3, which is 80 over 3. Okay, 80 over 3. And so the volume, the volume of the red part is basically 80 over 3 pi. So we're going to note that down. And now we need to find the volume of the blue part. So the volume of the blue part is actually going to be much easier. So volume blue. Why is it going to be much easier? Because the blue part is basically just we're just we're just uh, rotating a rectangle. And rotating a rectangle is just going to give us a cylinder. And we know the formula of a cylinder, the, the, the volume of a cylinder. The formula for the volume of a cylinder is, so let me say, volume of a cylinder. Um, is that how you spell cylinder? Oh, who cares? It's going to be pi r squared multiplied by the height of the cylinder. Yeah, so that's just it. So in our case, the cylinder's radius is going to be this part. So this is the radius of the cylinder. Oh my god, that's just so horrible. Okay, this is, ra this is the radius of the base of the cylinder. And this is the height of the cylinder. So the radius is 2. So radius is 2. And height is 4. All right. And now let's plug that in our equation. Okay, so that's going to be pi multiplied by 2 squared multiplied by 4. So that's going to be 16 pi. So that's the volume of the blue part. So the volume of revolution of the 
shaded area is gonna be volume blue minus a uh, volume red minus volume blue which is 80 over 3 pi minus 16 pi which is when it's 80 minus 48 over 3 that's going to give us 32 over 3 we forget a pi here 32 over 3 pi yeah 32 over 3 pi so our answer is going to be 32 over 3 pi that looks wonderful. Now, let me just check if that's the correct answer. First, so first of all, let me just highlight it. All right, I'll now just check if that's the correct answer. 32 over three pi, or did you just say 33.5? All right, so yeah, that's basically correct. That's wonderful. Let's move on to the next question. So we have question nine. Just give me one second. All right. So I just checked if it was recording because for a second I thought that I forgot to hit record and I got so scared. I just had a sip of water. But who cares? Okay. Functions f, g, and h are defined as follows. Solve the equation f of x equals 0, giving your solutions in the form x equals a plus b multiplied by the square root of c, where a, a, b, and c are integers. Okay, so we should equate f of x to 0. So x minus 4x1 over 2 plus 1 equals 0. All right, so a thing that we can do to make things much simpler is set x squared equal to y, for example. And this will transform the whole thing into, so we will transform it into y squared minus 4y plus 1 equals to 0. Wow, that's wonderful. Now we can use the quadratic equation. So the quadratic equation is basically x, uh, not x, it is minus p, plus or minus the discriminant over 2a. Yeah, let me just highlight this. This is what we achieved so far. All right, and if we plug in the values, actually we're gonna get four plus or minus, the discriminant is gonna be 16 minus four over two. So that's gonna be four plus or minus the square root of 12 over two. Uh, we know that the square root of 12 is the square root of four multiplied by three. And we can take the square root of four out, which will give us four plus or minus two multiplied by the square root of three over two. And now we can just actually divide the whole thing by two, which will give us two plus or minus square root of three. Fantastic, but we should not forget that this is these are answers for y, and our y is square root of x. And to get x, what do we do to get x? We should square y because the square root of x squared is going to be y squared. So we should square our y. So y squared equals to two plus or minus the square root of three squared. Wow. 
yeah, that's basically what we do. And they're asking to give the solutions in this form. All right. So let's take y1 squared first, which is going to be 2 minus a 2 plus square root of 3. So 2 plus square root of 3 squared equals to 4 plus 4 square root of 3 plus 3, which is 7 plus 4 square root of 3. Wonderful. Y2 squared now. That's going to be 2 minus square root of 3 squared. That is 4 minus 4 square root of 3 plus 3, which is 7 minus 4 square root of 3. So we got our two solutions here. So the answer is going to be 7 plus 4 square root of 3 and 7 minus 4 square root of 3. And let me just quickly verify whether that's indeed the correct answer or no. Um, something just, for some reason, settings just open up, opened up on my laptop. All right. So. Let me just quickly connect my laptop to the power. All right, I'll cut this part off. Okay, 7 plus 4 square root of 3, 7 minus 4 square root of 3. And which means that our answers are officially correct. So we slay. Now they ask, given that f of x equals g h of x, find the values of m and n. All right, so step one is actually going to be find g h x so we have h x which is x squared not x squared but the root of x minus 2 oh my god i realized that i was saying uh, x squared instead of the root of x this whole time yeah that's wonderful all right uh, just don't get uh, confused, guys. So we should plug in the root of x minus 2 instead of x squared. Because it is ghx. Yeah. So it's going to be n multiplied by the root of x minus 2 squared plus n. All right, let's do that. n multiplied by x this squared. It was plus n, yeah? Is that right? Yeah, that's absolutely right. So that's plus n. And let's see what this gives us. This gives us n multiplied by x minus 4 x1 over 2 plus 4. And then plus n. Which is going to give us nx plus 4n x1 over 2 plus for n plus n. Voila. And this is our GHX. And now we should equate this bad boy to f of x. x minus 4, x1 over 2 plus 1, x minus 4 plus 1. So x minus 4. So this is step 2. Equate. Step two, not one, dumbass. Sorry for that. I'll cut that part off. Equals mx plus 4nx1 over 2 plus 4n plus n. All right. So let's set the a's equal. So here a equals to 1, b equals to minus 4, c equals to 1 a equals to n, b equals to plus 4n. Is that right? Yeah, that's right. Uh, actually, uh, I made another little mistake here. This is actually minus, not plus. Yep. Sorry for that. We all make mistakes. 
and the C is, this is a negative sign, and the C is 4m plus 4. 4m plus, is that 4m plus 4? No, that's 4m plus n. What the hell? What's wrong with my handwriting? My handwriting is so bad that I even don't understand it myself. So, we can know that from this, we found that, that m equals to 1. And here also, we confirmed that m equals to 1. So we know that 4 plus n is going to be 1, which means that n is not, not m, it's n. I'm being such an idiot today for some reason. Okay, who cares? n is minus 3. So the answers are m equals to 1. I don't know, that looks like a 7 for some reason, so I'm just going to erase that. m equals to 1, n equals to minus 3. And I'm just hoping that I did this correctly because I made so many mistakes down the way. n equals 1, n equals minus 3. Okay, so we solved that correctly. Yeah, that's quite surprising for myself. Uh, as surprising it is for you. All right. Oh my god, this looks like a hard question for some reason. It's a five-point question. The diagram shows a circle with center A of radius 5 centimeters and a circle with center B and radius 8 centimeters. The circle touches at the point... The circles touch at the point C so that ACB is a straight line. The tangent at the point D on the smaller circle intersects the larger circle at E and passes through B. All right, so one thing that we should notice is that EB is gonna be another radius. So EB is eight. And AD is also another radius and AD is five. So, and from this actually, we can successfully find the length of ED, and let's see if we actually need that. Find the perimeter of the shaded region. What? Okay, so for the perimeter, what do we need? Perimeter is going to be CD plus CE plus... E, D. So that's our plan. So, the first thing that we can do is find E, D. Because we know that this is 5, this is 8. So we can actually find the whole length of B, D. So, B, D squared equals 5 squared plus 13 squared. So, from this calculation, this is just the Pythagorean theorem. So, 25 plus 169, and we take the square root of it. Is that 13? Yeah, that's 13. That's definitely 13. Oh, I, I took the wrong things. Uh, yeah, another stupid mistake. Like, completely stupid. So we have BD squared plus 5 squared actually equals to 13 squared. Yes. Sorry. My man's so dumb he doesn't even know how to use the Pythagorean theorem. And who the, like, only God knows how he actually graduated uh, grades 10. Let's see. So this gives that 169 plus 20 minus 25. So BD is going to be equal to 12. And we know that EB is actually 8. So ED is actually uh, BD. BD minus EB, which is 12 minus 8, which is... Four. So we found this part. 
This part is four. That's gonna be four. And now, um, sorry. And now we need to find DC and CE. So what we what can what we can do here is basically find these angles, and then from these angles we can actually find the the circumference of the sector basically that actually creates a sector. So we're gonna use a bit of trigonometry to find the angles. So let's start with CD. So we're gonna be finding CD right now. First of all, we need to find the angle DAB. So find angle DAB. And let's just call it X. So this is X and let's call this Y. So let's use a cosine. So the cosine of X is gonna be adjacent over hypotenuse. So adjacent is five and hypotenuse is 13. So the cosine of X is five over 13. So X is the inverse cosine of five over 13, which is gonna be sixty seven point thirty eight degrees all right we found the angle and now we can find the whole perimeter by using the formula for the perimeter of the sector so it's gonna be sixty eight over thirty eight over three hundred and sixty multiplied by 2 pi r and r in our case is 5. So let me just plug that in my calculator. And where is pi? So here's pi. So this is going to be 5.88. So cd equals to 5.88. Okay, what can we do now? Um, we can, uh, now we should find CE. All right. Now, so for that we need angle Y. So what can we use to use, what can we use to find angle Y? We can use sine. So the sine of Y is gonna be five over 13. So Y is gonna be the inverse sine of 5 over 13 or we could just basically subtract what we found earlier from 90 which is literally the same thing y is just going to be 90 minus x which is going to give us 22.8 62 is that right i'm just depending on myself instead of the calculator and i'm just hoping that what i did here is correct yeah it's that's 22.67 yeah 22.62 so i still know how to do math that's wonderful and now we can find the perimeter by doing 22.62 over 360 and multiply by 2 pi 8 8 was the radius yeah yeah the radius was 8 so this is going to equal to, so 22.62 over 360 multiplied by 16 pi. This is going to be 3.158. So CE is going to be, well, 3.158347, 8 on the calculator. And it's always useful to write the whole thing because at the end, we're going to simplify. Don't simplify in the middle. Simplify round always at the end. So CE is 3.158.3478. And now we basically add everything up. So the total perimeter 
which is our answer, is going to be CD plus CE plus what we found earlier, which was ED. And if we add up everything that we found, that's actually going to give us, so what was ED? ED was 4. So if what we did is correct, the answer should be 13.04. And the unit, unit is given, unit is centimeters, so just include centimeters. And let me just highlight it. And I'm just hoping that what we did is correct. And yeah, the answer is 13.0. So yeah, they asked for three significant figures. We gave four significant figures. Uh, and there's no difference, basically. But usually it's better to write in three significant figures. So just write 13.0. And now what's the next question? Find the air. Oh my God, we had so much more space. I thought we ran out of space. So I wrote the answer here. All right. Find the area of the shaded region. So how can we find the area of the shaded region? So well, we, one thing we can do is find the area of the whole triangle and then subtract the areas of the individual sectors. So that's what we're gonna do. So the area of the triangle is gonna be just base times height over two. And I guess that is five times 12 over two, which is gonna give us 30. That's step one. And now we find the areas of the individual sectors. So for that, we're actually gonna use the angles that we have. So we so to find the area of the first sector, we're gonna use 67.38. So 67.38 over 360 multiplied by pi r squared, which is 25. And the area of the third one is going to be 22.62 over 360 multiplied by pi r squared, which is 64. Uh, sorry for the car noises. There's traffic in the area at night. Okay, so 68.38 over 360 multiplied by 25i. That's going to give us, this is 14. 14.7 and the other one is going to give us let me just calculate it the other one is going to give us 12.633 uh, so we have these these things and we're just going to add them up so shaded area is going to be the sum of all of these basically and that's going to be oh not the sum sorry we should subtract so the shaded area is going to be 30 minus 14.7 plus 12.633 which should give us 2.67 and let's just say centimeters squared Actually, you don't need to give the unit, but that's all right. That's not going to make you lose marks. All right. I think we finished with question 10. So let's move on to the next question. So I guess question 11 is going to be the last question that we solved. So we have A, B, and C. So let's get done with that. It is given that a curve has equation this, where k is a constant. Find, in terms of k, the values of x at which there is a stationary point. Hmm. So, stationary point. So, this means that we need to find gradient equals to zero. And how do we find gradient? We find the derivative. So, dy over dx equals to zero. All right, let's derive eight. So step one, derive eight. So dy over dx of 
k, 3x minus k minus 1 plus 3x, it's going to be, so we bring the power, so we multiply by the power, so that's minus k, then we subtract 1 from the power, which is minus 2, and then we multiply by what is inside, so the, the derivative of what's inside with respect to x, so we multiply with 3. This is basically the chain rule. So if you don't know how to derive it, if, or if you don't know the chain rule, I'm going to upload a video on how to derive it and what the chain rule is. So uh, stay tuned on the channel. And then we have a plus 3. So this is going to give us minus 3k over 3x minus k squared plus 3. Mm -hmm. And now we should equate this whole thing to 0. So minus 3k over 3x minus k squared plus 3 should be equal to 0. And after simple simplifying stuff, we should get k over 3x minus k squared equals to 1, I guess. Yeah, so we basically took the plus 3 to the other side and did it minus and, and turned it into minus 3. And then we divided both sides of the equation by minus 3. So this gives us k equals to 3x minus k squared. So k equals to 9x squared minus 6xk plus k squared. Uh -huh. And now we can turn it into we can turn it into a quadratic equation. So 9x squared minus 6xk plus x plus k squared minus k equals to zero. So now we have a quadratic equation where a, where our a is basically nine, b is minus six k, and c is k squared minus k. All right. And now, how do we find the answers to this? We use the quadratic equation. Yeah, this is going to be very, very, very long, unfortunately. So we use the discriminant. So the quadratic equation is minus b plus or minus b squared minus 4ac over 2a, which is minus 6k plus or minus the square root of b squared is going to be 36k squared 9 and c is k squared minus k over 18. So this is going to be 6k plus or minus 36k squared minus 36k squared plus 36k over 18. So 36k squared and minus 36k squared cancel out. So we have 6k plus or minus 36k over 18, which is actually just so we can uh, take out 36 outside of the square root, and this is going to be 6k plus or minus 6 square root of k over 18. And actually, we can divide the whole thing by 6, which will give us k plus square root of k over 3 plus or minus. Now, let's see. The values of x. So, the values of x is going to be x1 is k plus square root of k over 3 and x2 is k minus square root of k over 3. 
that basically should be the correct answer. And let me just clarify from the mark scheme. Uh, yeah, that's actually correct. And now let's do B. Find the value of A and determine the nature of the stationary point. The function F has a stationary point at X equals to A. So has a stationary point basically means that the thing is, uh, the derivative is zero. Uh, yeah, the derivative is going to be equal to zero. So actually what they did is just take the equation that we have here and change k with 4, I guess. Yeah, they changed k with 4. So actually, the x values are going to be k plus or minus square root of k over 3. So it's actually going to be 4 plus or minus square root of 4 over 3, which is 4 plus or minus 2 over 3, which gives us x1 to be 6 over 3. 6 over 3, which is 2. Uh, what did I just write here? And x2 is 2 over 3. So what they did here is basically uh, set k equal to 4. So we took our original answer and just plugged it in 4 instead of k. So what we did here is I was a bit fast. Plug k equals to 4 into the previous answer. Okay, and it says that x should be either equal to or more than 3 over 2. So actually, this is going to be incorrect. So our correct one is going to be x equals to 2. So x equals to 2, which means that a equals to 2. Voila. And then they say, find the nature of the stationary point. So how do we find the nature of the stationary point? Uh, finding the nature is basically taking the second derivative. So we're going to take f prime prime x and see whether it is more than 0 or less than 0. So if f prime prime x is going to be more than 0, this is a minimum point. If f, uh, f prime prime x is going to be less than 0, this is a maximum point. So let's do that. Let's take the second derivative. So what was the first derivative? The first derivatives, the derivative was minus 3k. So it's going to be minus 3 multiplied by 4, which is minus 12. And that's over 3x. 3x minus k squared. So 3, 3x minus 4 squared. And then plus 3. So we need to find the derivative of this. Which is the derivative of minus 12. 3x minus 4 minus 2 plus 3. So what do we do? We multiply it by the power. So that's going to be 24. Then we subtract 1 from the power. And then we multiply by the derivative of what's inside. That's basically chain rule. And plus 3 is going to be 0. So this is basically plus 24 times 3. That's 72. So it's 72 over 3x minus 4 power 3. And now we plug x equals to 2. So 72 over 3, 2 minus 4 cubed, which is 72 over 6 minus 4 is 2, so it's 8, which is 9. And now 9 is more than 0, which means that it is a minimum point. Minimum point. So I don't have space to write the answer, so I'm just going to highlight this a equals to 2 and a minimum point. Okay.
the function g is defined by this. So now they basically changed k to 1. So k equals to 1, or, or is it minus 1? Let me see. Yeah, k is minus 1 in this case. Yeah, k is minus 1. Determine making your reasoning clear whether g is an increasing function, a decreasing function, or neither. So how do we deal with such kinds of equations? Uh, we can first derive it to find uh, the derivatives. So the derivative is basically going to be from what we found earlier, negative 3k over 3x minus k squared plus 3. So that's just going to be 3 over 3x plus 1 squared plus 3. All right. Uh, what can we observe? So if we plug in any value of x here, let's say any value of x, for any value of x, let's say any a, any number a squared is going to be positive. Is that right? Because if, even if we take a negative uh, number and squared, it's going to be positive, which means that uh, 3x plus 1 squared is always positive, which means that our dy over dx is always positive, so always more than zero. And what does that mean? It means that it is an increasing function because, well, why? Because, uh, well, as I said, the value of x is basically, like the value of dy over dx is always more than zero, which means that the slope is basically like, it's not like this, or it's not like this, where the slope is going to be negative, but it's rather either like this, or like this, or like this, or something like that. But not like this, but like either like this, or like this. Yeah, so it's an increasing function. dy over dx is more than zero, or we can say f prime, or g prime actually, g prime x more than zero, thus it's increasing. All right, so this is the end of February, March 2022, paper 12. So check the channel for more videos. And yeah, if you enjoyed, I would appreciate if you could like the video yeah, and share it to anyone who needs help with this paper or other papers. Thanks.